Hey, what's up, everybody? Um, just want to get on here and share some uh, things with you. I'll try to be as brief as I possibly can. I know that we're all busy, but I uh, just want to share some stuff with you over what I've been seeing over the past 48 hours. And it's not my nature to get on Facebook and share my opinions. I'm not good with politics, um, and I don't want to cause a big war of words. That's definitely not my intention with this video. Um, but all day today, I cannot get past everything I've been seeing the past 48 hours. Um, and really not 48 hours, but months and years. But it only seems to be getting worse. Um, and I just I went and prayed, and I just feel like this is what I'm supposed to share with you. If by all means this bothers you, or you don't like my message, please just keep scrolling. But um, like I said, I've been seeing some stuff that just I, I feel like I have to say something. Um, why do we not want to say anything about the things that we are seeing on the news with the racism and the violence and the hatred that's going on. I'll tell you one thing, one reason why we don't uh, want to say anything is because we don't live with the mentality of the shoe being on the other foot. Um, until you've really tasted of racism, until you've really tasted of uh, the violence and being mistreated the way people are being mistreated right now, um, you'll never really understand it. I, I'm going to tell you a couple of stories and then I'll be out your hair. But uh, it's ridiculous me even telling you this story, but um, I went on a mission trip one time. It was about 15 years ago, and um, it was a very poor country. And we stopped our little van, and we, it was on the side of the road, and there's this uh, store. It was like four by six. That's how big this place was. And it, it was obviously no air conditioning, not even enclosed. It was like plywood. And they had some snacks and some drinks there, like Cokes and all that kind of stuff that they were selling just to try to make money to survive. So I walk in, and I'm like, yeah, let me get one of those six-pack of Cokes, if that's all right. And the person across the counter looks at me, he's like, nah. And I'm like, man, maybe I, my English and my Southern accent is so bad. Let me, let me say it again. Um, no, it's one of them Cokes on the upper corner. He's like, nah. The person I was with realized what was going on. And it's like, hey, man, let's just go. Let's just go. And I'm like, what do you mean, let's just go? There's this Cokes right there. I got money. What I didn't realize is they didn't want to sell me the drinks by, based upon the way that I look. I wasn't from where they are. I didn't have the same nationality. And they just absolutely refused to sell me drinks. Now, that is a ridiculous example of prejudice and racism uh, compared to what other people are facing. Um, people are being verbally, physically abused, and even murdered by the way that they look. And uh, my point is this. That trip was over 15 years ago. And that was a small, I mean, grain of sand in all the beaches in the world compared to what's going on right now. But it's been 15 years, and I still haven't forgotten the way it made me feel. See, once we've tasted of something, then we can understand and relate to other people and what they're going through when they're going through the exact same thing. Uh, I'll give you an example. My daughter, Emma, uh, if I cry, forgive me, two months ago was put in the hospital. Um, she got a stomach virus and got crazy dehydrated, so much to the point um, it, was, it just got bad. So we took her to, to the emergency room. And when we took her to the emergency room, she ended up staying for three days. Um, and one of those days, Stacy, her mom, had to leave, my wife, had to leave the hospital and take care of our other daughter who got sick at the same time. I'm here with my daughter. And how many of you know, can't nobody help you when you're sick like your mama can. And I'm doing my best as a daddy. It's just me and her. And I'm like, God, please help me. And she wanted her mama, she wanted to go home, she wanted to be in the hospital, she already been there a day or two, she had this IV stuck in her arm, it was hurting, and she looked at me, and I'll never forget, she had tears coming down her face, but she was swallowing it to try to hold it back, and she was like, oh, I want to go home, and I'm like, what baby? And she's like, I want to go home, and she just screams it, and she starts losing it, she can't control it anymore, she can't swallow it in, she can't hold it back, and I just, I just picked her up and I held her, man. And when I tell you I lost it crying, I lost my mind crying. Um, but it made me think of this. What about the people that were in the children's hospital where I was, that they were going to be there for days upon days, weeks upon weeks, months upon months, and some of them would never even return home. Their return would be to a casket. And I just that made me lose it even more. But see, my point in telling you this is this. Now that I've left the hospital, I'm like, okay, God, I'm praying all the time. Please, please help those people that have children in the hospital and they're helpless, they can't do anything for them and they're going to be there for a long time or they have terminal diseases. 
See, once I tasted of being in the hospital myself, I could understand what, what parents are going through with children being in the hospital where they are right now. You see what I'm saying? So once you've tasted of something, what does that mean? Once you've experienced something, then you can relate other, to other people and what they're going through and show mercy, show grace, show help in their time of need. You see what I'm saying? Now, another reason why we don't do anything is because we don't think we can make a difference. But we can't just sit by and not say anything. That's like the Good Samaritan in the Bible. When the person got beat up and they got left for dead in the ditch and all these people were passing by this person that was dying in the ditch and they just walked on past them. And I can even see some of them like, man, I'm glad that's not me. Man, I'm glad I'm not the one in the ditch. But there was a good Samaritan, which means a good person that came by and said, you know what? I'm going to help this person. He picked the person up, took them to the inn, uh, to the hotel or whatever it was. And he said, here, take care of him. Here's money. He'll take care of him. Whatever expenses he needs, get him well. And he took care of him. Now, that's what we're supposed to do as a church. Let me tell you a story. And this, this is where it gets a little bit stingy. So it's all right. I, want, I hear stories all the time about children being abused. Uh, and it torments my mind. It literally bothers me. Um, if they're sexually abused, physic, physically abused, verbally abused, whatever the case may be. But this is what makes it a hundred times worse. Is when I hear stories of... Um, the, all right. When I hear stories of children that are being abused, let's say by their father. And, and, we'll, and we'll give the sexual uh, abuse as an example. And the mother knows about it. Yet she's in the living room and don't say a word. And don't do anything to help their child who's being abused. I look at the mom and I'm like, what are you doing? How could you let your kid get abused like that? That's your own flesh and blood. I know that you hear them. I know you hear the abuse. You've got, you've got to do something. You, are you kidding me? My question to us is, though, what's the difference in that than what we're seeing in the news the past 48 hours? When we're seeing people being, literally, a person is being killed because of hatred and racism, and we just going on look the other way and not say anything? Man. And I know people are like, well, that's not the same. The story, you can't relate the story of, of the child being abused. Uh, that's a whole different story. Yeah, it is different. I'll tell you why. It's different because what's going on with hatred and racism and the violence that we're seeing is people are being murdered. Not, not just abused. They're being murdered. This, this is unacceptable, man. Let me keep going. Let me keep going. I want you to understand we can change the channel and we can keep scrolling and we can look the other way. But I want to ask you, what about the people that are in the situation? They can't change the channel. What about the people that are being abused? They can't keep scrolling through the social media. What we do is, I, I'm guilty of saying, okay, no, 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 don't hear it, don't hear it, don't hear it. But just because we don't want to hear it or don't think we can quote unquote handle it, what about the people that are actually going through it? What about the people that are actually being abused or mistreated? You see what I'm saying? Well, this, this is, I'm going to give some rebuttals here in a few minutes. But a lot of people say, well, if they didn't act a certain way, if they would just do this and they would just do that, then they wouldn't be treated the way they're treated. Let me ask you a question. Well, when I went to that little store just to buy a drink in another country and it was refused, what did I do wrong? What negative thing did I do? I didn't do anything. I offered actually money to help them survive and live. Yet because of the way I looked, it was refused. Same thing goes for other people. We can't all put people in a category and say, well, if they just did this, if they just did that. People are being mistreated and abused and, and victims of racism just because they were born with a, a different color skin than we are. That's... That's unacceptable. And I know people say it's a heart issue. We can't stop hatred. We can't stop racism. But if we as a church can stand up and show love to those who are being oppressed and abused and wrongfully treated, then that's at least a start. I, listen, I don't have all the answers. 
but I can give you a few things to consider to help other people that are going through racism. And again, I'm not an expert. I don't know. I'm just going to share with you some things that I'm learning and I want to pass to you. Number one, let's teach our children that this type of behavior and treatment of other human beings is wrong and unacceptable. Jesus didn't die for just one group of people. He died to save the entire human race. The entire world is who he died for. Number two, let's ask questions. How can I help? What's going on in your life? Help me understand the way it makes you feel when you're a victim of racism. Those are some of the questions we can ask because here's the thing. We must seek to first understand before we seek to be understood. That's why the Bible says, be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. Many times, listen, many times it's not always uh, those who are victims of racism. They don't always want you to necessarily solve a problem. Instead, they just want you to listen and let their voice be heard. A lot of reasons why riots go on is because some people feel their voice can't be heard. Many times my wife doesn't want me to solve her issues or solve her problems. My wife wants me to listen. And as men, that's hard. Just to sit there and listen like, what if you would just do? Just listen. Just, just listen. Be quiet and listen a minute. Number three, the Bible says, if my people who are called by my name, I'm pretty sure that's the church. We can't expect the world to pray. But that shouldn't be the case in the kingdom of God. If we would humble ourselves and pray and seek God's face and turn from our wicked ways, that includes violence and hatred, then I will hear from heaven and I will heal their land. So those are just like three things. There's, I mean, I'm just, there's so much more. There's so much more. But I ain't got time to go into all of it. That's just three things off the top of my head that I think we can do. Now, here's my favorite part. Let's go over the rebuttals. This is my, I, I hear this all the time. Well, you won't change anything. Hatred and racism will always be here. Well, you know what? You're right. Hatred will always be a part of life. But if I can teach and show my children and any other person I come in contact with how to love others, and then we try to stop this hatred from being passed down to next generations. So let's start with, again, start with our children. But understand this. Hatred and racism isn't something we wake up and decide to do. It's something that we learn and we are taught. That's where hatred and racism can literally come from. Now, there's another rebuttal. Well, this weekend was a radical group situation. Um, it was like a cult in the, in the KKK. That's a radical group. Hatred doesn't always rear, hatred or racism doesn't always rear its ugly head in mass gatherings or organized groups. It can also come in the form of a disgusted or mean look at somebody just because they don't look the way that you do. It could also mean a denial for a job interview or denial for a chance at an opportunity just because of the way that they look. Hatred, again, and, and racism, it's all, it, it isn't always the biggest shout or the biggest scream on the streets. It's the subtle stuff. You, you can't sit where I'm sitting. You can't be where I'm at. It's the subtle stuff, man. Here's another one. Well, there's racism on both sides. There's racism. <sighs> Seriously, listen. There's racism in every culture. Every culture has racism. But let us not use it as an excuse to look over a brother and a sister who are being abused or mistreated right in front of our eyes. Let's go back to the mama sitting in the living room. Is that what we want to do? Is that who we want to be? I don't want, I don't want to, man. I, I don't want to be that person. Whether you like it or not, we need each other. We need each other. I don't need just my family. I don't need just my wife, my brother, my sister. I, I, I need everybody. We all need each other. We need everybody. Whether we like it or not, that's the way it is. And I'm going to tell you, if you don't like it, man, heaven's going to be hard for you, man. It's going to be real hard when if, if you get there. Let me just say it that way. Uh, I once... I once um, visited an African-American church. And, I, and, and my, me and my family were the only um, Caucasians in the church. And I'm going to tell you, man, I've never been treated so amazing, so friendly, so loved. I mean, there was, I mean the, they had the ushers and 
and everybody come up, you want something to drink? You want some uh, mints? Do you want something to eat? You want a fat? I'm like, man, this is unbelievable. The minister from the stage was like, we want to recognize our special guest. We're so honored to have you here. I felt like a king, man. I felt literally like a king. But those things were awesome. And this was like, man, when I was young, like 12 years old. But you know what I don't forget out of that whole experience? Not just the way I was treated and loved, but here's the other thing I don't forget. The minister said this, you know, we can play the black keys on the piano and we can make beautiful music. We can also play the white keys on the piano and make beautiful music. But what happens when you put those together and you play a song? It makes the most beautiful music you've ever heard. I was like, this man just floored me. I'm like, that, that's exactly it. Watch. Now, I can tell you this. The Lord wants us to come together and play his love song for the world to hear. And when we do, our sound of unity can penetrate the darkness. I didn't say it could destroy, get rid of darkness. I said it can penetrate. If we can change and help one person, then it's worth every bit of it. Um, listen. May we as a church and the kingdom of God stand up and show love to every race, every human being. For how can we say we love God whom we've never seen if we can't love our neighbor who we see every day? I pray this message helps you. It doesn't hurt you. I pray it opens up the eyes of our understanding. If I lose friends on social media, so be it. You really want my friend anyway. Um, if I lose any followers or opportunities... It's not my intent uh, to spread hate or uh, anything like that. It doesn't solve anything. My intent was completely to help us open up the eyes of our understanding and see it from a different point of view. All right? I pray that you're blessed. I hope this message helps in some sort of way. And the least I can say, I stood up and tried to show the love of God. All right? God bless you.